Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, different grind geometries. So a couple days ago, I got a message from uh, one of our viewers who uh, asked about different kinds of grind geometries, what the advantages and disadvantages of different grind geometries are. Basically, we're talking about convex grinds, hollow grinds, flat grinds, and then sort of a spin on the flat grind, which is the chisel grind. So uh, I'm going to just jump right in here and talk about what the advantages and disadvantages of those various grind types are. Let's start with hollow grinds. The hollow grind is formed by grinding the blade against a wheel. This causes the grind to form a concave shape along the blade. Grinding wheels have existed for many, many centuries, so hollow grinds go back a long way. But now, most modern smiths make them with belt grinders, using contact wheels of various radiuses to form the hollow grind. The primary advantage of the hollow grind is that it allows the shaping of a very thin cutting edge while maintaining a fairly thick spine for strength. The classic example of this is on the old-fashioned straight razor, but the same strategy can be used on conventional knives. As a general rule, hollow grinds are used on relatively small knives and knives where slicing ability is more important than shock resistance. Hollow grinds probably take more skill than any other type of grind to produce. If you get a little out of whack, the grind just looks awful. The convex grind, as the name implies, is the exact opposite of the hollow grind. The blade's bevel bows out slightly. The advantage of this grind is that it gives maximum support to the blade, making it ideal for applications like chopping where the blade will be subject to a fair amount of shock. Japanese swords, for instance, are made with a slightly convex design, making them less prone to breaking or chipping when cutting armor or other hard targets. An additional benefit of the convex grind is that it can be brought all the way to the edge without a secondary bevel, without that edge being so weak that it chips or breaks easily. Here I'm grinding a convex grind on a slack belt fixture. Unlike a flat platen, this has no hard backing, so the harder you push into it, the more convex that it gets. This type of grind is sometimes referred to as a Moran grind because it was championed by famous bladesmith Bill Moran, one of the prime movers of the renaissance of bladesmithing in America. This kind of edge takes a lot of skill and work to maintain, so this approach tends to be taken with collector blades, cutting competition blades, and other fairly specialized blades like Japanese swords. They're also a little slower to produce than other grinds. Another blade shape that you'll see on some knives is the chisel grind. Like its namesake, the chisel grind knife has only one bevel. It's flat on the back and then has a bevel on one side. Also, like the convex blade, it's often sharpened straight to the edge without a secondary bevel, making it potentially exceedingly sharp. Many Japanese cooking knives are made this way. When sharpened this way, it's most effective when cutting soft objects. The sushi knife is the classic example of this type of grind, where the single bevel on one side allows for great control of the cut, separating the flesh from the main part of the fish. The difficulty of maintaining a chisel grind that goes straight down to the edge with no secondary bevel is that the entire surface of the blade has to be brought down in order to sharpen the blade. Without specialized equipment, this really requires a fair amount of time and effort. It also makes the edge quite fragile, so this grind is most suitable for specialized knives, which won't be used to cut tough or abrasive objects. Music 
finally we turn to the most common grind, the flat grind. This grind has symmetrical bevels so that the blade has a very steep V shape, flat on each side. The flat grind is easy to produce on the flat platen of a belt grinder. It's also probably the most versatile grind. Not too weak, cuts decently, and it's appropriate for virtually any knife, from kitchen, to hunting, to self-defense, to everyday carry. Typically, the flat grind has a secondary bevel at the edge, making sharpening comparatively easy and quick. The drawback of that secondary bevel is that it limits its ultimate sharpness to a lower level than some of the other grinds, particularly the hollow and chisel grinds. It's sort of a jack of all trades, master of none. I should point out that the flat grind is sometimes subdivided into what's known as a saber grind, which is the type of grind shown in this picture. It's a flat grind, but it just doesn't run all the way up to the spine. This makes for a slightly worse cutter, but for a slightly stronger blade. To summarize, hollow grinds are best for light duty knives where a premium is put on slicing ability. Great for small hunters, utility knives, and folders. Convex grind, stronger, but trickier to maintain. And they're excellent for hard duty work like chopping. Chisel grind, best for cutting soft items like fish and meat, capable of extreme sharpness. Flat grind, it's a jack of all trades, master of none. The most versatile all round blade type, and as a general rule, probably the most easy to manufacture. Now, is there a perfect grind? Absolutely not. But if you had to choose one for all applications, the flat grind is a pretty easy choice. Fortunately, nobody's putting a gun to your head, so choose the one that's best for your application. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, here are a couple of other videos that you might be interested in. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrells Blades and check out my website, waltersorrellsblades.com, where you'll find examples of my work along with instructional videos showing all aspects of Japanese sword making, including forging and polishing, how to make hamones, and how to make fittings, scabbards, and handles for Japanese swords.